Back at my nine front home grid doing another demonstration of CPU servers. I did a demo of a Raspberry Pi doing a sort of Internet of Things type stuff. Uh, people have strong opinions about Internet of Things stuff. It's, I think half of it is, you know, half the negative stuff is just the software on them, which Plan 9 uh, partly addresses. Uh, the other half are legit problems of adding networking to things that don't need it. Uh, the Juicero was a uh, prime example. So I'm back with an example of a thing that needs an internet connection by definition and is something pretty much everyone has, the, uh, the Wi-Fi router. So I have this little thing here. It's uh, from a company called Highlink. It runs a, a MediaTek MT7688. It's a 32-bit little Indian MIPS CPU. Single core at about 580 megahertz um, and 128 megs of RAM. I have this little LCD character display wired into it through the I squared C interface. So I usually boot these things off the network. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, these sort of little development boards, uh, they use a uh, U-boot, which is kind of like the uh, their version of the BIOS that you'd find on PCs. It's a little miniature program that does very little to get the system bootstrapped. Uh, this one has uh, the ability to use the network to load in kernels. So I don't actually use the flash storage on it. Um, I just use the default U-boot that comes with it, and I tell it to pull down a kernel off my home file server uh, and run it. And uh, makes it really easy to develop for because I can just you know, hit the reset button and tell it to pull down a new kernel. So if you are used to messing around with Wi-Fi routers, you're probably using OpenWRT. OpenWRT is a cut down version of Linux that is flashed onto the router and then runs totally internally. Additional functionality can be added to it, but it is limited by the onboard flash storage. But with NineFront here, I'm not limited by the flash. Um, this thing is just part of the grid and I can run whatever software uh, you know, is available on the thing. So being that this was compiled for SPIM, let's see here, that would be, uh, I could look in SPIM bin specifically if I want to. Oops. And I have basically, you know, everything, um, you know, all the standard software recompiled for it. Uh, I used to be able to run Doom on it very poorly, but with this uh, new kernel I did, it uh, crashes for some reason. But on the whole, there's nothing cut down about this. It's uh, just another machine on the grid, and provided I cross-compile everything, it can just run everything that any of my um, AMD64 PCs can run. So having the router set up like this means I can load kernels and configuration files off the file server, it also means I can, you know, log into it and uh, make changes to, uh, directly that way. Um, so currently, I'm working on the driver for the Ethernet switch, and in Plan Nine, uh, Plan Nine style, I expose it as files. So I can let's see, it's the that in n. So there's some of the files I have for it already. Um, so one of the things I did also is I got the uh, interrupts working for it and I have those sort of print out a message on the, the kernel message. And I also have it since it's loading off the grid, I have it pull down the driver I have for this LCD on here and I can print the thing. So I have a little Raspberry Pi wired in over here. I'll power it on. And as soon as this, uh, thing powers up, it should uh, send the message and get printed on the LCD. And there it is. So it changed to uh, say the other port's on. And if I cut it off, it'll switch it back. And being that these are exposed as files, they can be pulled over on the network. So my main Intel machine here can pull those files in and I can manipulate them from here. So let's do something fun. Let's uh, get that Raspberry Pi back on. Oops. 
see, I can ping it. All right. Anyway. So I can pull down some statistics from the thing. I can check some configuration. You can see I have the port change set up as one of the interrupts. And I have a directory for the ports and all the ports listed as numbers here. So let's see, the Pi is on port four. So it's currently enabled as a LED setting. So I can do things like um, change the LEDs. So let's uh, do, I think 12 is just on into port zero. There's nothing currently in port zero right now, but I can make the LED turn on. And then the default setting was five, which is just for blinking for activity. So if I tell it to go back to that, Oops, how did I do that wrong? Oh, LCD, it's not LCD, it's LED. Echo, LED five into zero. There we go. So if I start pinging the Pi again, I can disable the port. Enable off on port four and the ping stop. If I turn it back on, it starts pinging again. And yeah, this is not actually, this window here is running on gate. So this is running on, uh, you know, an Intel i5 something or other machine, but I am pulling in the, uh, the driver files from this router here. So those files work the same as they would on here. So I can if stat and get them on here too. So either I can, yeah, access the, the machine directly, you know, run Rio, have graphical programs, uh, do whatever on it, or I can just ignore that and just pull in the files I need to, um, to mess with them directly. So I still need to finish some, some uh, stuff like the VLAN um, to get it actually sort of routing and everything. Um, there's a lot of stuff to do with that. When I went into the settings on it, it has like per port and port mapped VLAN tagging, um, has untagging at the ports, double tagging at the ports, all kinds of settings. Um, but I thought it'd be fun to have like a little demonstration of a CPU server that isn't either a powerful computer or some, you know, silly internet of things type device. Um, I hope this is interesting. Uh, and as usual, have fun.